Hello, and uh, welcome to Eddie Part 1, an introduction to Eddie. I'm Christopher Hermalik, Associate Professor of Spanish at Onondaga Community College in Syracuse, New York. I'm also a PhD student of Instructional Design, Development and Evaluation at Syracuse University. And I'm Jennifer Quinlan. I'm an Academic Product Consultant at Brigham Young University. I work with our World Language courses and all of our university online courses. Previously, I taught French um, online and face-to-face, -face, and I worked as an Instructional Designer. And now I'm pursuing a PhD in Second Language Acquisition. Thank you, Jen. Uh, as you can probably imagine, uh, designing an online language course is an exciting opportunity, but it's, it's also a challenging endeavor. It will be important to plan your course carefully throughout the process. One way to effectively plan your course is to follow the five steps of Addy. In this first module, you will learn about the five steps of Addy, and you should be prepared to continue on to other modules in this program. By the end of this module, you should be able to define instructional design, and explain the iterative nature of the instructional design process, name the five steps of ADDI, and explain the importance of each step to the instructional design process, and apply the five steps of ADDI to both a non-instructional and an instructional context. Now, many of us have designed online language instruction, and we've learned the hard way the importance of taking the time to plan and design an online course before diving into developing resources and getting the course ready for students. A small change in plans can lead to big losses in time. Hmm. So for this reason, uh, Jen and I are going to begin with an overview of the instructional design process and why it is so important for the development of our online language courses. We'll try to keep it as grounded in practice as we can so that you can begin to apply it to the course you're developing as soon as possible. First of all, a definition of instructional design is that it is the systematic and systemic approach to creating more effective, efficient, and engaging instructional experiences. But what does this mean? By systematic, I mean that instructional design follows a methodical, uh, logical progression. It doesn't mean that instructional design is a hard science and doesn't mean that it follows a straight linear process either. Instead, it refers to the fact that you don't design instruction at random. Designing effective, efficient, and engaging instruction for learners requires considering what you would like students to be able to do by the end of instruction, how you will know whether or not they're able to do this, and then how you will guide students toward accomplishing these objectives. By systemic, I mean that in terms of creating instruction, we take a systems view to the instructional design process. So in other words, the elements of the instructional design project interact with each other in a dynamic and an interdependent manner. And if we employ a systems view of instructional design, we realize that every piece of the instructional design process is dependent on other elements of the system and will in turn affect other elements that are existing in the system as well. So one way to balance the systematic and systemic nature of the design of instruction is to follow an instructional design model for a given context. A model is a simplified visual representation of complex concepts, ideas, processes, thoughts, etc. An instructional design model visually represents the complexity of the instructional design process for a specific context. So there may or may not be a model of instructional design available at your institution, but whether or not there is, you will almost definitely find that just about all models contain five common elements, which are usually summarized as ADDI. They stand for the actions analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. So here's a visual representation of ADDI. You'll notice that analyze is at the top and is typically the first step one takes during the instructional design process. Design usually follows analysis, followed by development and implementation. However, notice that there are no arrows in this model and that there are only curved lines. 
this represents the fact that instructional design as a process is not a straight linear process. In fact, instructional design, as you're going to find out very soon, is a highly iterative process. And you'll find that as you design your course, you'll move from analysis to design. You might realize that you have to make changes because things are not going according to plan. You return to the analysis process again. And also note the evaluate circle in the center as well too, that it's connected by a dashed line to each of the steps in the process. This represents the fact that evaluation is not simply an afterthought and should not be ignored, even though this can very easily happen in many ID projects. Evaluation should be taking place throughout the entire process. This type of evaluation, known as formative evaluation, will help you to discover places where revisions in your instruction should take place before it even reaches its intended audience. So as you can see in the model depicted here, the five steps of ADDIE labeled on the right hand side are part and parcel of what we do as teachers all the time. We analyze the learners and the learning environment and determine the content that will be most appropriate based on curricular requirements and student needs. We design instruction by keeping in mind what our objectives are for students, or of course, what objectives they determine are important depending on your philosophy of instruction. We prepare assessment, we prepare lessons to prepare learners for that assessment, and we choose appropriate media and technology along the way. We adapt or we buy or we develop our materials. Uh, we implement instruction when we teach our units and our lessons. And we evaluate by looking at what has worked and what should be improved next time. We'll dive deeper into ADDIE in another module, but let's just start with some of the basics. As we begin to think about teaching online, you've most likely decided to do so based on a reason. There was most likely either a formal or an informal needs assessment conducted to determine that online language instruction was the best solution to address a need. This is a great time to begin thinking about summative evaluation. For example, how will you know and measure if this need was effectively met? You will also want to analyze the learning context to know what resources and support are available to you. You will also want to consider your learners and their learning needs along the way too. Finally, you will need to know what content to cover or what students should be able to do by the end of the course. Keeping in mind the types of tasks learners should be able to complete, whether they're synchronous versus asynchronous, oral versus written, uh, interpretive versus interpersonal versus presentational, this is also important to keep in mind too. So mm, as we talk a little bit about design, the design stage is when you begin to plan, plan your instruction. After completing your analyses, you will know enough about the learners, the context, and the task and the content to be able to write objectives for your learners. You can then plan for assessment to determine whether or not learners have reached those objectives. You can then determine learning strategies that will support learners as they progress towards meeting the objectives. And finally, you'll begin to choose instructional media to support your learners. And two things to note. First of all, Note that assessment is listed here before learning strategies. It is important to know how learners will be assessed so that learning strategies will be planned to support your learners. Second of all, notice how instructional media and technology are chosen much later in the process. We are limited by the technology available to us, of course, which we learned in our analysis. But we're not planning our instruction according to our technology. You also may have begun to notice the iterative nature of the ID process, the instructional design process. While designing your course, you may find you'd like to use an instructional strategy with your learners. You might return to the analyze phase by contacting your Office of Instructional Design and Delivery to find out what technology resources are available. Then you go back to the design process again, this time armed with that new knowledge that you gained from your analysis. So with all this talk about analyzing and designing, you may wonder when you'll ever get the chance to just go in and develop your course. Right now, Jen is going to give you more information about developing your course. Thanks, Chris. Um, it's a lot of fun talking about this with Chris because we've both experienced first, firsthand how beneficial using the ADDIE process can be to our work. 
So now we're in the development stage. This is where your bright ideas turn into reality. Now you want to follow, you've spent all this time analyzing and designing, so follow that design. But don't lose too much sleep if things evolve a little as you build the course. When a new idea or a road bump comes up, ask three main questions. Does it fit with the intended design? Could it be saved for a future iteration and will it delay development? So sometimes, let's say it's fall, you're working on the course that you need to have for winter. You might not have the luxury of time to implement new ideas, but you can revise and refine your course often. Remember, it's not static like a textbook. So an online course is iterative, like Chris said, and sometimes uh, certain elements just need to be saved for a future iteration. Remember, a live course is a good course. Now, let's talk about getting it live. The implement stage maybe seems obvious, but for a lot of people, this tends to be the end of the process. Evaluate often gets dropped off. If you implement and then you do nothing from there, you really have an incomplete process. How do you know if what you're implementing is working? Now, the same is true in our classrooms, right? When we implement specific practices, we want to do so in the way they were designed and developed, and then we want to evaluate their effectiveness. The implement stage isn't really the time to be creating new things on the fly. You want to be able to measure what you've designed and developed. So let's talk about evaluate a little bit. How do we evaluate? Now, just as we've spent a lot of time in analysis, design, development, and implementation, and we probably had a timeline for all of those, we need a timeline and we need to spend time on evaluation as well. Just like in your instruction, evaluation can be formative and summative, and both are important. So think about this example. You need to get from point A to point B by a certain time. You know there's a lot of traffic that could make you late. Analyze. You consider various transit options and you decide that you're going to drive, design. You map out a specific route and plan how much time you think it will take, develop. You then take the route, implement. And then you evaluate whether or not you got there on time and whether that was the best way to go, whether you would go that way again the next time you take that route. Colleagues might say, oh, you should have taken the train or you could have taken this shortcut or you might have wondered if you could have gotten faster there just biking. Formative types of evaluation. But in the end, you got there in time so you know that your plan worked. A summative type of evaluation. Does that make sense? Well, how do we apply ADDIE? Sometimes it's a little less daunting if you think of it in terms of real life. So here's a real life example that follows the ADDIE process. This is something that you'll think about and work on in the create section of this module. You'll consider the real life process and then use our template to apply, to apply the ADDI process to an instructional context. So for now, just feel great that you have already learned the basics of one of the most widely used models of instructional design. Go you. Okay, so let's have a quick overview. Today, we defined the instructional design and explained the iterative nature of the instructional design process. We named the five steps of ADDIE and explained the importance of each step in the instructional design process. And we talked about ways to apply the five steps of ADDIE, both in a non-instructional and instructional context. Now, um, remember, you always have support. You have your mentor that you'll be working through with as you go through this course, and you also have the distance learning special interest group. We're a community here, and we're all together. We can lean on each other. We can get support and ideas from each other. I think you'll find that this is a great adventure. We hope you'll join us for a future module where we talk a bit more about Addy, and we also talk about backward design.